Hey everyone, I'm Stu Pollard, and welcome to the 80s Emporium, your home for everything 80s. Now look, if you're a regular follower of this channel, you know that every September we take a break from the 80s content in order to celebrate our favorite month and our favorite beverage. That's right, it's National Bourbon Heritage Month. And being the movie nerds that we are, we like to celebrate by looking for the best appearances and mentions of bourbon throughout cinematic history. And this year, once again, we are thrilled to have the founder of Buzzard's Roost Bourbon and the owner of Bourbon's Bistro, an all-around bourbon aficionado, Jason Browner, on hand to help us identify some bottles and provide some very fun background information on the bourbons that we're going to identify in this episode. So sit back, grab a drink, and join us for Bourbon and Film Part 4. Now, the alcoholic content of bourbon and other alcoholic beverages is measured in proof. So it's fitting that bourbon plays a big role in Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof, which is one half of the double feature Grindhouse. Now, early in the film, Sidney Poitier, daughter of the legendary Sidney Poitier, orders a round of wild turkey at the local bar. <laughs> Warren, six shots of wild turkey. So the girls are probably ordering wild turkey 101. It's uh, kind of their flagship. Everybody talks about wild turkey 101, uh, the kicking chicken. Wild Turkey also makes uh, Russell Reserve, named for Jimmy Russell, their master distiller. And they also do uh, a rare breed. Later in the film, Kurt Russell, while teasing and terrorizing a group of young women, is struck by a bullet from Marcy Harriel's gun. Well, adios. Oh, fuck. It's a good thing that Mr. Russell has a delicious disinfectant on hand. In this case, it's a bottle of Four Roses. Well, today, Four Roses has kind of stepped up their game. Uh, they have two mash bills and uh, five yeast strains. So that gives them 10 recipes that they can uh, fool around with or blend or make different expressions from. Do it! Do it! Now, while Bond, James Bond, is known for his love of martinis, he's also been known to imbibe other beverages, such as champagne, wine, beer, even mojitos. You should try it. And as you've seen in a previous video, he also drinks bourbon, no ice cream. But 1995's Golden Eye, which, by the way, was written by Nice Guys Sleep Alone author Bruce Feirstein, we learn that Bond isn't the only member of MI6 who has a soft spot for that Kentucky beverage. Would you care for a drink? Thank you. Your predecessor kept some cognac in the top. I prefer top. bourbon. Ice? Yes. The long-anticipated but critically panned Batman vs. Superman features Jesse Eisenberg as evil genius Lex Luthor. Now, although he's clearly the villain of the film, anyone who appreciates a good bourbon can't be all bad, right? A little bourbon before lunch? My driver's outside, I can't stay. No bourbon? Kentucky girl like yourself? <laughs> My dad always said that Kentucky mash was the secret to health. Remember, if you want to support our channel, the best way to do so is to send us one million dollars. If you can't do that, then head over to our online store, 80semporium.com, and check out some of our original 80s merchandise that you cannot find anywhere else. Now here's a chilling appearance by Bourbon, and it has nothing to do with being served on the rocks. In 1982, director George A. Romero and writer Stephen King teamed up for the horror anthology Creepshow. The segment Father's Day features a bottle of Jim Beam, which is very briefly enjoyed by both Vivica Lynn Fors and Ed Harris before they meet their untimely ends. <laughs> now we know Bourbon is powerful stuff, but Waking the Dead? That's pretty potent. It looks like here they're using White Label Jim Beam, which is the largest seller in the world. Jim Beam actually he was up and running 90 days after Prohibition ended. Uh, so that was uh, pretty quick. So he's been making whiskey the same way for 200 years. Bourbon, which is of course alcohol, is also classified as a depressant, which means it can be used to calm the nerves. In It Chapter 2, Bill Hader plays a confident stand-up comedian. But when he learns the terrifying monster from his childhood has returned, he is hit with an anxiety attack. And needing to calm down quickly before his next show, he knows exactly what to order. Right, you know, just get him a bottle of water. Maybe. Bourbon. 
Broken shirt, shirt, part of the mint. It is showtime. I don't think I can do this. Oh, no, you do need to kill. You're a killer. Okay. Oh, you go and hey, where are we going? Where are we going? This way. Out of way. Okay. The bourbon is a strong drink, especially in higher proofs, which is why many people choose to enjoy it in cocktails. Spectacular. But if you're going to skip the mixer and drink it straight, it's important that you drink it slowly. This is a lesson that Edward Furlong's Hawk finds out the hard way in Detroit Rock City. Drink? Yeah, hands drink. What's this? You mean you've never seen a bourbon on the rocks before? Do you need a last minute gift for someone special? If so, you can find me on Cameo, where I'm raising money for Trunacy.org. I can talk filmmaking advice, 80s nostalgia, bourbon recommendations, hangover cures, you name it. Lieutenant Dave, I got you some ice cream. Lieutenant Dave, ice cream. In the Oscar winning Forrest Gump, Gary Sinise's Lieutenant Dan turns to liquor as he copes with PTSD and the loss of both his legs in the Vietnam War. His brand of choice appears to be Heaven Hill, which has been around since 1935. So Lieutenant Dan in this scene is uh, drinking some Heaven Hill uh, gold label. That is, they're bottled in bond. Uh, that's four years old. It's going to be 100 proof. He looks like he's down on his luck. I think you, that bottle's probably not that expensive, so um, I think that goes right along with the character in this, in this scene. While we're big fans of bourbon, it's important to remember to always drink in moderation. In 2021's critically acclaimed The Power of the Dog, Kirsten Dunst develops a crippling addiction to bourbon, specifically a brand called Good Ones. A Good Ones bourbon, to me, it looks like definitely a Prohibition-style bottle. Could be a label out of Canada. I'm, I'm not familiar with it here in the United States, but during Prohibition, it could have been anything. But it really looks like the, uh, the producers did a good job of, of, of mocking up a label if it's not a real label. While bourbon is a popular drink, it can also be used in cooking. Just ask Dr. McCoy in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Beans, Spock, but no ordinary beans. These are from an old Southern recipe handed down to me by my father. Am I to understand that your secret ingredient is alcohol? Whiskey, Tennessee whiskey, Spock. Bones uses Tennessee whiskey here, but Kirk mistakenly refers to it as bourbon. Bourbon and beans, an explosive combination. Denzel Washington makes his second appearance in our bourbon series in flight, this time portraying an airline pilot who struggles with substance abuse. Amongst the variety of beverages he drinks, bourbon. You'll recall from our very first bourbon episode that Burt Young's Pauly in the original Rocky enjoyed Four Roses as a way to keep warm during time working in the meatpacking facility. Well, 30 years later, in Rocky Balboa, he's still loyal to the same drink and even the same brand. Four Roses, what we used to call yellow label. The yellow label was always kind of thought of as bottom, bottom of the shelf, 80 proof. You know, you really, I guess it was kind of a bad connotation when you say Four Roses is yellow label. I mean, now he's doing much better and he's still drinking Four Roses yellow label, so. I don't know what that says about Four Roses Yellow Label or Pauly. We don't know. What an ugly dog. It's a cute dog. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are good you're a bourbon fan. If so, remember that we're selling our very own 80s Emporium bourbon that we hand-selected, currently available from our friends at the Wine Rack. It's a new riff single barrel pick, and it's delicious. And we will conclude this year's episode with a classic. It's a wonderful life. At Martini's Bar, which is now called Nick's and run by a grumpy bartender, Jimmy Stewart orders a double bourbon. Oh, uh -huh, Nick. Hey, where's the Martini? You want a Martini? Oh, no, Martini, your boss. Where is he? Hey, look, I'm the boss. You want a drink or don't you? Okay, all right. Double bourbon, will you? Quick, huh? Okay. We can actually see the brand here, King of Kentucky, which has recently become resuscitated by Brown Foreman. So, yeah, the King of Kentucky. Uh, Brown Foreman owned the product. They've owned it since the 30s. It's been off the market, uh, but Brown Foreman has brought it back as kind of, once again, we talk about these LTOs, a limited time offering, uh, and you're, they're very hard to get their, your hands on today. Stewart and Henry Travers get kicked out of the bar. 
but it's important to remember the moral of the story. Any life that involves bourbon is a wonderful life indeed. Now I want to hear from you. What's your favorite film appearance by a bottle of bourbon? Got any ideas for movies we can use next year? Comment below or hit us up on social media using the hashtag 80s Emporium. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so we can keep making more great 80s content. Thank you for supporting the 80s Emporium and we will see you next time.